Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to my favorite series. It is Transformation Talk with my one and only co-hostess with the most is Donna Morton. Morgan, uh, she's with Inner Vibes Consultant, as she says on Facebook. You can find her all over uh, social media. Uh, and today, our guest on Transformation Talk is an intuitive lifestyle coach. We're going to learn all about the one and only Suzanne Dwyer. Welcome, ladies. How are you today? Thank you. you. Doing wonderful. Great. Yeah. Everybody's bright. You got all all sorts of good good energy and good juju, which you both are have the good juju. That's for sure. Uh, so, uh, transformation talk. Obviously, Donna's going to give us a little more info, but it is it is just one of my favorite uh, programs, and I have to give all the kudos to Donna for creating. With coming to me with the idea, this is just a beautiful thing. I learn so much every single time we have a guest, yeah. and I always leave feeling good and motivated and inspired. So, without further ado, uh, Donna, before you introduce Suzanne, uh, tell us a little bit about you and, of course, about transformation. Sure. Welcome back again, everyone. My name is Donna Morton Morgan, and um, most of you know me as a CEO of Women of Culture Incorporated, real estate broker, uh, Florida real estate broker, and um, you know, just a global community advocate. We are now in in designated countries in in the Caribbean and in Africa, supporting women, children, and families. And our local outreach here, we are supporting children whose moms are incarcerated and also supporting individuals on their way out from incarceration. We get to wrap our arms around them and provide them with resources of community partners. So that's who I am. Um, I'm also a life coach and I would say a spiritual development coach Love it. because we are all about, we are spirit, spirit beings. And so we're developing self, right? Yes. So we teach on how to elevate the mind, elevate the heart, and the soul always follows. So transformation talk is all about what did you go through? What did you experience? Was it something medically? Was it addiction? Was it abuse? Was it just money, <laughs> career? Whatever that is, we are all on a journey where we are either struggling to transform something, need help, or some of us have all, have done the work, transformed, and now we're reaching back to help others. And that's what this show is all about, transformation talk. So um, we are so excited to hear today from Suzanne, who's going to tell us her incredible journey and her unique ways, I say very unique way, in transformation. Welcome, Suzanne. Thank you so much, Donna. It's really great to be here, Ted and Donna. Thank you very much. Excited to have you here. Um, if Donna's motivated and inspired, you know uh, something's going on because she's motivating and inspiring. Yes. So tell us, um, uh, the audience loves journey. You know, that's the whole point, how you transformed, what, what was the transformative moment or moments or life events. So um, we'd love to pour some love into you and hear your, hear your story and journey, Suzanne. Thank you. Well, I mean, I think like most of us, um, my journey kind of started when I was a lot younger. Um, you know, we have a tendency of saying, you know, oh, you know, my childhood was rough. Oh, well, move on. Right. And we don't actually really give it the attention that it's due. And when we do, it's usually because we're dealing with it as adults. And now all of a sudden it's like, oh, we have problems with relationships. Why? Oh, because the way that I was treated when I was a kid. Hmm. Um, so I think that a lot of um, what I personally come to realize is um, uh, we've all go through what we need to go through to be able to grow. Just like, you know, a butterfly doesn't become a butterfly until it's been, you know, really tight in that cocoon for a long period of time. So we're supposed to go through the things that we're supposed to go through. Um, but in my journey, mine started when I was a lot younger. Um, I got married at a young age, um, unfortunately had to endure some uh, pretty bad um, physical abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse in relationships. Um, 
had to learn a lot about myself throughout that time. And of course, I struggled. We all have struggled. Um, but I was trying to understand how to get my footing. And it wasn't until um, I had actually gotten incredibly sick and um, had a very severe case of pneumonia and ended up in a drug-induced coma from it, um, where they actually had to like drain my lungs and let me take like two weeks in a drug-induced coma to be able to heal. Um, it wasn't until that point that I came to realize that um, work is not something that we should do by giving up our life, mm -hmm. and yet we do it every day. Um, so that was actually the last job I ever worked. After that, I'm like, I'm working for myself. That is it. Only thing that sucks is that when my boss is being a bitch, I can't get away from her. But <laughs> at least, <laughs> at least I have a little bit of control over it. Um, but that was my first step in my journey. Start working for myself and take back that piece of control. Oh, was it was very hard. hard. I think I was raising four are... kids at that time too. So th I want you to share a little bit about that because I think there are people who watch the show. No, I know there are people who watch the show and they're there. Mm -hmm. Like they have experienced something like you and yet they just are so fearful of mm -hmm. making that change and making that leap. Can you talk about how you were able to actually do that with four kids? Absolutely. Um, so for me, it was, um, I, like I said, I, I got really sick. I was working at that point like seven days a week. Um, you know, I was paying my child care was more than my rent at that point, or my mortgage at that point. And I was just constantly working to the point that I was not getting a break. Um, I ended up having to cover an event, which is where I ended up getting pneumonia for being outside in the rain for seven days straight. And um, my boss wouldn't give me time off of work to go to the doctor, which would have prevented me from getting that sick. Um, I would have just gotten some medicine. I would have been totally fine. But my boss kept coming up with excuses on why I couldn't leave. And finally, it got to the point where it was like 2 o'clock in the morning and I couldn't breathe. And I tried using my inhaler and it didn't work. And I nebulizer and it didn't work. And finally, I called an ambulance. And they're like, we need to get you to the hospital. And I'm like, I'll go to the doctor in the morning. It's fine. I drove myself to the doctor. Walked in with my youngest daughter in a stroller at that point. And um, the nurse started screaming cold blue into a phone. And I'm like, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> okay. Um, then I come to find out that my, like, my, my, of course, I had the nurse call my boss and say, I can't come to work and everything like that. And um, comes to find out that he actually sent some of my coworkers to see me at the hospital because he didn't believe that I was actually there. He thought that I was just trying to get time off. And um, oh. if you want to talk about totally embarrassing, try being intubated with a catheter, machines breathing for you, and have someone that you work with day in and day out when you first walk into the office to go pick up your, your work to catch up on everything, that person hugs you and says, I thought you were going to die. You look like you were going to die. Mm -hmm. I was mortified. It, was, it took everything in me. To be able to say, you know what, it's Thursday, I'm going to be back in on Monday, but I'm bringing my work home. And uh, when I went back to work that following week, my boss refused to pay me for the weeks that I was hospitalized. Wow. <laughs> yep. And I'm just like, after that, I'm like, you literally were going to take me away from my children. Mm -hmm. So the one thing we always have to look at, first and foremost, is if the person that we are working with does not value us. They're never going to. No one's going to value us more than we value us. And our first and foremost, especially as moms, is our children. So I was leaving the hospital, going home, having to deal with raising four kids by myself, now starting a business. Um, and then it was a couple weeks after that that my husband left. Um, oh, so, yep, yeah, shortly after that, my husband, my husband walked out. Um, leaving me with the kids by myself. So I was like, okay, that's what I'm going to have to do. I, I um, have so many oh. questions, I mean, I, but I want to ask you, how, I think, how did you know what you wanted to do? It's one thing to know you have to leave. Yeah. And I'm sorry, like, you're, that's, that's a book if you haven't already written one. Um, but how did you know what you wanted to do? I was already in the field of marketing and I really loved marketing. Um, there was something cool about like the mind control 
stuff of it. Mm -hmm. um, we got to tell people what to buy, what to like, when to like it, what to feel like when they owned it. Like, it was really cool to me to kind of see how we were able to adjust people's thoughts and feelings based off of different things such as color and, um, you know, visuals and things like that. It's just, it was, to me, it was really interesting. Um, and for that company, I was their marketing director. Um, so, you know, kind of, it was like a natural transition for me to just stay in marketing. Um, so I did exactly that. That's good. You know, Go ahead, Donna. Suzanne, um, a lot of times we end up doing, turning our pain into profit or purpose. And you had such a crappy experience, um, near death. There was no compassion from your employer. And so you, that gave you the idea to then, you know, kind of produce wellness or um, some kind of empathy, the business that you turned it to for employers. So it's just fascinating how we go through the messy stuff, right? And then that's what inspires us. So we had to experience some something of it, and then we're inspired to be to for to be the change. And that's exactly what you did. Wow! Thank you. So thank you. You you, you obviously are inspirational. So you. It's, you. <laughs> it's the story is fascinating to me, and I, the the not funny thing, but the the ironic thing, I guess, is that um, I know that there are other people who have experienced similar things and found their purpose, like Donna said, in their path. Um, yeah. But how did you turn the marketing into uh, becoming an intuitive lifestyle coach? And what is that? What is intuitive? I mean, I know what intuitive means, but I've never seen it put with lifestyle coach. So I'm fascinated by how you progressed to that. Well, so I think that the number one thing that we should all know about is the fact that we make plans and God laughs and we make plans a second time and the universe cracks the hell up. <laughs> right. So, so we true. never end on the path that we start on. Um, however, it's a journey. Our entire life is a journey and we're supposed to kind of figure out the path of what we're supposed to be on. And for me, it started in marketing, um, which turned into business coaching um, because I was actually convincing people to not use my services. Because I'm like, you don't need this yet. <laughs> like, and then I'm thinking about it. I'm like, why am I telling them to not use my service? Because they're not ready for it yet. Um, so I was like, you know what? I probably better get into a field where I'm just professionally telling people what to do for a living, which works for me. Redheaded female, super good at telling people what to do. Um <laughs> So I stuck with that and I'm like, okay, so, you know, business coaching, which I had been doing now for over 20 years, um, I've been doing coaching. Yep. Yep. And, um, not that long ago, I actually, um, did to myself what my boss did to me. I burned myself out. I started a company and it took over. Um, and you know, it's a beautiful company, but unfortunately, um, there was no way to allow it to survive. I was, I was burning myself out so badly that medically I was not okay. I was only about a couple months away from organ failure, according to my doctor. Um, and this was not that long ago. Um, and I was so stressed out all the time that like I was, you know, crying all the time. I was, I was worried about everything. I wasn't sleeping well. I wasn't taking care of my body. I wasn't taking care of my spirit. I wasn't taking care of anything besides just work. And um, so, uh, you know, transitioning out of that, um, I had to do a lot of self-work and I had to kind of focus in on what it was that I, I was missing. And um, so I kind of created something to kind of figure out where I was at. Um, so I created an assessment for myself to kind of figure out what I was missing, um, like what areas were, were I was doing good in, what areas was I not doing good in, and where to find kind of balance in those spaces. Um, so I created an assessment and started working through it, and then I created like a kind of a step process, and I started utilizing that for myself. And then I started talking to other people that have gone through their own transformations because this is part of it. Like as you continue to level up as a human, you will continue to 
be sidetracked. You will continue to be pushed on your path where you're supposed to be compared to where you thought you were supposed to be. Things will just continue to happen the way that you do to get you to where you need to be. That's a constant that never changes. Um, so I think that what it came down to for me was I really needed to kind of see it for a bigger picture of what it was that I needed. And as I figured that out, I was like, okay, all of these things make sense. Figured these things out, made an action plan. I'm a Taurus, if you can't tell. Um, like, make a plan of action. You know, like, set it up. Let's let's go. And um, I started talking to other people, and they started telling me about their journeys. And they're like, oh, if I would have done it that way, that would have been so much faster. I was like, oh, okay. So then I started talking to some more people, and they're like, wow. Yeah, like, my process took me, like, three years. How long, how long is your process taking you? I'm like, three months. And they're like, what? How? <laughs> and I'm like, well, hopefully. <laughs> I guess I figured out the, the code here. Um, but it really came down to a different level of understanding for myself on exactly what it was that um, that seems to be missing. And, and all it seems to be is learning how to assess so that you know what the problem areas are because we ignore too many things like we all focus on one area or a couple of areas of our lives that we're super right. strong in and then all the other areas just like get pushed off to the side mm -hmm. and it's about creating a cohesive balance within your life um when there's seven different areas of your life it's kind of like um like your chakra system there's seven different chakras there's seven different areas of your life that you have to have in a correct cycle to make sure that everything is working for you and the things that are doing good, we need to create maintenance for, and the things that are not doing good, you need to create an action plan for. Susan. And then you just have to learn how to implement that with the right people. So coming into intuitive lifestyle yeah. coaching. Quickly, um, Su uh, Susan. Intuition and coaching forever. Um, but getting into intuitive lifestyle coaching was specifically to help people go through the same crap the transformation, if you will, that we all have to go through to get to that point of where we're supposed to be in the shortest time possible with the least amount of the hiccups along the way while feeling incredibly supported and being surrounded by the right service providers. Wow. Susan, you know, many of us, when we think about transformation, we, we do think, um, you know, some kind of addiction or abuse right mm -hmm. how often do we talk about regular professionals regular people that are not abusing anything but are just overworked just put in just grind in the grind that we talk about so much the no sleep team no sleep um all of this just for for success and we we forget about our health or we put it on the back burner. And um, sometimes also family get put on the back burner. And but it's so incredible to hear you because, yeah, you've been a professional uh, a business coach for so many years and didn't realize that you were being burnt out. And, yeah. and got to that point, you know, in your health. So we need to, as professionals, we need to understand balance because we we don't want to get to this extreme. Because what what you know what do we have when we've got the success but then our, the the health fails? So we need to kind of balance um, balance it back up. And I'm so thankful for you for just bringing because this is new to bring that, that the burned out is, you know, uh, teams, no sleep is not healthy. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. And I think, I think um, one thing that I, it's definitely not healthy, but I want to ask you something, something you uh, said resonated with me. I'm completely 100% capable of identifying what areas I need work in that doesn't mean that I either have the tools, the resources or the wherewithal or the desire to change them or to address mm -hmm. them. Um, so how can how did you do it? How can we do that? Because I think I, I can tell you the things that I need work in. 
<laughs> there's probably a million other things, but at least I can self-identify, let's say five to 10, which is probably really low. Um, that doesn't mean that I'm focusing on them like you were talking about. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to necessarily fix them, which is probably causing me grief in the areas that I am doing well in. And it's draining me and it's doing all of those things soulfully, spiritually, and physically that you went through. So how do we take the information we know and get outside of ourselves or out of our own way and begin to address it so that we can make that positive impact. Absolutely. Well, you call me, of course. I mean, come on. <laughs> oh my God, I set that up. That was good. <laughs> Not even on purpose, y'all. Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, what it really comes down to is <laughs> change can never happen if you choose not to make it right and the number one reason why we don't change or we decide to just kind of leave things off to the side is because change is outside of our comfort zone and it's scary out there and people are just super happy in their favorite comfy chair in their you know favorite little with their favorite book and their favorite blanket curled up in a ball with that ring of smoke around them just living in that space because everything on the outside of that space is scary well growth happens outside of that space mm -hmm. and if you don't want to grow absolutely you know don't don't bother bob with any of those things that you know or bother are like kind of sitting there and bothering you but if you truly want to make change happen you have to kind of assess the situation so the assessment that I made actually forces you to dive into those areas, whether you need work in them or not. And the reason is because if you don't need work in it, but you need work in other areas, which we all do, there's like no one's immune to this. Um, if you don't need work in some areas, you need to maintain those areas so you don't slip from where you're at. Because otherwise you're gonna create a plan of action and it's gonna completely change everything that you're doing which includes the stuff that you're doing right. Right. It's true. It's and I feel like people will hear you like I'm hearing you and um, we still want to fight it. But I think an assessment would help me because sometimes having that in black or white in front of you is right. the wake up call that you need. It doesn't always have to be hit over the head, but it's as close to that so that you can actually see, oh, my God, all those things that I've been fighting or all those things I know I need to work on. Here it is right in black and white based on this assessment that I've just done. Um, and I think I think a lot of people will listen to, to your journey. And um, I know that you both have experienced this. Uh, and I've been dying to ask this question almost every time we have a coach on. Um, there are a lot of people who have now overnight become coaches. So you've got this assessment, you've got this 20 years, you've got this experience, you have developed tools that you have implemented yourself. How does the normal person who goes, okay, I need help, hands up, but they, they don't know how to figure out how to maneuver through the minutia of the coach world to get to the right one. What should they look for? What, what, what would you recommend them really do some analysis on themselves so they can choose the right person? Oh, absolutely. This is actually one of my favorite questions because mm -hmm. everybody thinks they're a coach. They um, because it's a non God, they it's, it's terrible. <laughs> Exactly. Every, everyone. I could throw a rock and hit 20 coaches in my own neighborhood. Yeah. And, um, and I don't live in a small town. Like real um, so coaching is an area in which there's no regulation. That's the hard part. Um, with something that has no regulation behind it, anyone can say that they're a coach, even if they've got no experience. So what I always say is always ask always ask questions, ask for references, ask for background, ask for, you know, the, the past experience. Um, if they don't have more than a couple of years experience in the field, um, try to talk to somebody else. Um, granted, yes, everybody is going to need to start somewhere, but they should be transparent with you in that aspect. They can't tell you if they've been, you know, coach for 10 years when they've been coaching for three months. That's um, people need to be transparent with you. So get the information. Don't be scared to ask the questions. A real coach is going to give you the right answers. They're going to give you the real answers. Um, they're not going to give you any crap. I mean, I've, I've met a lot of coaches in my life and I'm just like, so you're a business coach, okay? So like, 
how old are you? They're like, I'm 21. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, we appreciate their motivation and their, um, their, their chutzpah, but wow. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I think and a lot of people are caught up and they don't, that because it is such a saturated word, yeah. it's, it's like the buzzword. I'm a coach. And then they throw adjectives in front of it and words after it. And right. It's all pretty. Uh, but they, they, people need to do a, uh, their own thorough job of vetting that. Coach. Yes. People can become a coach in like two weeks, the, you know, on paper. I, what I always try to tell people is look at someone's life example. If they're a coach in and about their life or, or, you know, look at what they are doing. If they say they, they coach in marriage, is their marriage working in lifestyle, whatever it is? Are they upset if they're saying I'm I'm a mindset coach and and I talk a lot about love? Am I coming on Facebook and talking about hate and and you know all this stuff? You have to really just look at people's behavior, how they live, how they align, what they say, who everything about that, and you will be able to tell if that person did the work on themselves because that's where it begins. We all have to do that work on ourselves as a coach to be able to teach you tips, practices, practical steps. So, you know, watch that, watch the, the social media interaction, watch the interaction between family <laughs> and friends. You're a hundred percent. Well, I've yes. never thought about that, but mm -hmm. oh my God, that is exactly yes. the first thing I would look for. Like, mm -hmm. okay, what are you really putting out there? If it's right. a mixed message, is that really what I need? Because obviously I need somebody to get my messages straight. Right. I don't need somebody with mixed messages. Yep. Um, but I think uh, you're both absolutely right. But there are people who need it. And I think what's great about the flip side is what's great about it being saturated or being that buzzword is that people are more amenable to it now. They're open to it. Um, they understand what a basic coach needs to be. And so they're willing to listen a little more. We just need to encourage them, like you both said, to vet. Yes. All right, Suzanne, tell everybody, uh, first of all, this has been a joy. I learn every time I laughed. <laughs> I learned a lot. I'm going to go inward. I'm going to have to figure out what that um, analysis uh, sheet is that you have because I'm fascinated by it. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm gonna send it to you. Please, yeah, love it. and then you know, don't publish it. You wait, wait till I'm gone, and everybody can do a whole medical research on Ted Bogert. But um, please share how they can best reach you, find out more about you, uh, learn about what Suzanne Dwyer does. Absolutely, they can go right to the website SuzanneDwyer.com, and they can learn all about me there. Fantastic, and Donna, how about you? Facebook and IG at Inner Vibes Consultant. Suzanne, do you have a second to tell the story of your house? Of my house? Yeah, how you got oh, that. Tell do, us. You, do you have a second? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's actually one of my favorite stories. Um, so my house, I drove past it. It's going on nine years now. Um, I was coming up to Massachusetts on vacation, and I drove past this amazing, beautiful property. And um, I was like, oh, my God, that's it. That's my dream home. I'm going to own that. And I was dating somebody at the time and he scoffed at me and said, good luck with that. So of course me being the person that I am, I'm just like, now that you told me that I can't now I have to just be spiteful. I loved it. Um, so I said it in my vision. I said it in my mindset and I just absolutely knew without shadow of a doubt that I was going to own this property. Um, I sold my house in New York. I moved to Massachusetts. I rented a house up, up the street. And I just kept it here, kept it here. And I just, I knew I was going to own it eventually. And um, I was renting a house and um, I remember having some problems with the landlord there, coming some back and forth that every couple of months she would increase my rent to a dramatic amount. And um, there was one month that she had said, yeah, I'm really, I'm just not gonna renew your lease. I can get so much more money. And I really thought she was serious. And this was like near, it was in April, it was near um, Easter. So I started looking to try to find something else and there was like nothing else available in my area. And I was terrified. Um, so um, I went to Craigslist, which is like the last place I would ever look. And I'm just like, oh, well, let me see. And then I found four bedroom house for rent. And I was like, oh, great. Okay. So 
we started like looking into it, texting back and forth with the with the property owner, and he's like, "Oh well, you know, it turns out my my sister's going to rent it. It's not going to be available." And I was like, oh, "Okay, that's fine." I'm like, "The, the landlord actually renewed my lease anyway, so it's fine." Um, it was a couple of days, like three days before Thanksgiving, that she tells me, "Oh, so um, I wanted to let you know I'm not renewing your lease," and I was just like, "All right, how much more is this going to cost me?" And she's like, um, no, I'm serious this time. I have a rent you moving in the day after you move out. I'm like, my lease expires December 24th. Do you mean to tell me that you're going to make me move my kids on Christmas Eve? Wow. And she's like, well, you can leave before then. I was like beside myself. I had family coming in for Thanksgiving. I didn't know where we were going to go or what we were going to do. And um, I remember it was a couple of days after Thanksgiving when I'm in the kitchen and I'm cooking um, because my kids already ran through our leftovers. And um, I kind of finally like was like, all right, universe, just whatever, whatever you're supposed to do, just do it. And um, a cardinal landed on the deck outside and I finally like took a deep breath and I was like, hi dad. No sooner do I do that, I get a text message. Um, hey, I don't know if you remember me. I'm the person that has the four bedroom house in Fairhaven. Turns out it's going to be available December 1st. Are you interested before I list it? I was like, don't list it. I will meet you. I will bring you a deposit. And he's like, you haven't seen me. I'm like, I don't care. We have to move. I want it. Yes. So that meant that the month of December, I had to pay two months of uh, a month of rent for each house. Um, and of course, for, um, first months in security as well. And I was like, I don't even care. I just want to make sure that, you know, my kids are taken care of. I didn't get the um, property address until about 10 minutes before I had to be there. Thankfully, I was close enough to it. Um, and I was still dating the person at the time that scoffed at me. And um, we got closer and closer and closer to the dream home. And turns out I was going to be able to rent the first of the three houses Um from my dream property. Um, and I kept active offers on the table for three years until he finally caved and said, that's it. Fine. You want to buy it, buy it. <laughs> um, and I was able to buy the first two pieces, first two houses and the pool house um, in the first transaction. And then about a year ago, I purchased the rest of the property and now it backs up to conservation land. So it's fully protected. So we have about uh, 10 acres of undisturbed land and private beach, three houses and a pool house and a beautiful pool and an amazing view every day. Isn't that amazing? Manifest. Yeah. Yep. Isn't that amazing? I teach other people how to get into the right alignment so that they can manifest what it is that they want. But until you get into your right alignment, it's really hard. It's harder than it needs to be. Right. It's that wow. vibes. But yep. Vibrational frequency that we talk about. We got to do a whole nother show on that. I want to, <laughs> I want to learn how to manifest better because I still don't have a 32 inch waist. I don't know what's going on there. Um, <laughs> okay. That has to do with someone's cooking. All right. Yeah. I know. <laughs> All right. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much, Suzanne, for coming on and sharing your journey. Donna, thank always you. thank you for bringing the best guests <laughs> on the planet to our show it's transformation yeah. talk if you all have a story have a transformation and are also now transforming other lives we'd love to hear from you and we'd love to have you as a guest we know that you will motivate and inspire people just like suzanne and donna have done thank you ladies so much bless you i can't wait to see that assessment i'm going to take it and i'll share it live we'll do a follow-up <laughs> on that uh thank you both so much you all appreciate you. Everybody have a blessed day. Thank you. you. God bless.